Hello and welcome to Motors for the Masses. Now, the humble Ford Transit has been around since 1965, 68 years ago. And since then, in the UK alone, they've sold over 8 million of them. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. Starting at just £560 in 1965, which is £12,000 in today's money, the price of a Transit now starts at £35,000, including VAT. This one is a 2018 Ford Transit Custom RSV Sport. Uh, it started life as a 130 brake horsepower, 2 litre Eco Blue Diesel Limited, but this one's now been chipped to 185 horsepower, and it certainly feels like it. The RSV Sport Pack includes the 18-inch wheels with 255 tyres. And the keen-eyed amongst you may notice that the front wheels are slightly different to the back wheels. And that is because I had a little argument with a kerb. And the kerb won and it scuffed up all the wheels. So you can't buy those wheels again. So I had to buy a set of four, slightly different, and the centre caps don't fit. But now it's got better tyres on. You also get the body kit, which is the side skirts, the deeper front valance, and the rear valance with dual exhausts and roof spoiler. I've added the orange plastic covers on the Ford badge because it came with the Ford grille already, and the orange stripes, and of course my graphics, and also the 1,600 pound Thor dual electronic exhaust system. And you'll hear that very shortly. Now, the Limited usually comes with cloth seats. I have fitted these leatherette seat covers, which go on quite nicely. Um, as standard, it comes with the digital stereo. Touchscreen, of course. Um, and in this model, you get the heated seats, the climate control, uh, DAB radio, and uh, obviously USBs are plenty. Um, and you've got bottle holder. Cup holder, cup holder, bottle holder, bottle holder, and another one in here. You get a USB and 12 volt on the dash. Storage on the front on the passenger side. 12 volt and USB on the front. Parking sensors, aircon, and dust. A dust, a little bit of dust. And quite a small glove box, to be honest. Um, big enough to hold the manual, some baby wipes, and headache tablets. Every essential needed for van driving. You also get cruise control and the multifunction steering wheel when you can control everything you need for the stereo, the uh, onboard computer and the um, cruise control itself. And sat nav using the SYNC 3 system that Ford now uses. Um, quite good to use. Um, the sat nav is quite simple. It's not brilliant. Um, but it's certainly not the worst I've used um, because the engine's not on. It takes a bit longer to uh, turn on because it comes on instantly when you start the van. Yes, okay. Changing language to English. Well, it always was English. Sometimes it gets a bit uh, tetchy. Don't know why. Loading map. Wow, it is a bit slow, isn't it? Talk amongst yourselves. <sighs> Hello? Brilliant. Look at that look. Oh, it's waking up. Like I say, it's instant when you start the van. In fact, I'm going to um, do that now. Um, I'm going to turn it off and start it up. And then you can see how instantly it comes on. Um, and um, you can also hear what it sounds like right now, which is pretty good from the inside. So keys in the ignition, and here we go, look. Anyway, whilst that is loading up, it's going to prove me wrong now, um, I do want to mention one thing I really don't like about this van, and that is that you get 
a heated windscreen, heated mirrors. However, this quarter window isn't heated in any way and doesn't demist. So whereas that demists and gets rid of ice very quickly, as does the mirrors, this doesn't especially when it rains as well, it's the same. So you have to get out and physically wipe it. With the window itself, you can put it down manually, obviously, or automatically with the button. But with this quarter window, it doesn't. So if it's frosty, you have to get out and actually get rid of the ice on that quarter window yourself. Because otherwise, having a heated mirror is pointless. Because you can't see out of it anyway. It's loaded. <laughs> you also get other features such as electric mirrors, obviously electric windows, um, automatic lights, automatic windscreen wipers, all that kind of stuff. So let's have a look in the back. So in the back, dual doors, you can get them with the single up door. I'm not too much of a fan on that to be honest, I quite like these uh, double opening doors. Um, it came with this liner in it already. Um, I've uh, added the blankets, obviously, as you do. <laughs> uh, the wheel chock, um, I've also added that rack, and it came with the carpeted boards in this one already. Now, the only downside to this <sighs> is that. Now, I'm five foot ten and a half, and this is it. So when you get a bike in, you've got to be careful which bike goes in here. Um, the advantage of this van is that it looks really cool um, and with that comes the lower roof but with the lower roof comes not much practicality like so but for what i need it's ideal i love the way that sounds well great sounding doors so with a new price tag of 35 grand this one being 2018 with 70,000 miles on the clock cost me 25,000 with all this stuff on it, plus 1,600 quid for the exhaust system. And yes, I know that's a lot of money to spend on electronic exhaust, but I don't care. It sounds awesome and I love it. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. In fact, I might even do it on my Audi. But there we go. So for now, let's get it out on the road and see what it drives like. But just before we do do that, I want you to, first of all, just take a minute and have a look at this because I think it is the best looking van out there. Okay, it's subjective, but I personally think it's got the looks of a really nice van, especially with this kit on it. This is the H1 model, so it's the lowest roof you can get. Um, and it's the 280, which is the load capacity, 2,800 kilos you can carry. But I'm gonna step back for a second and I just want you to revel in all its beauty. I know it's a van, but look at it. Very pretty looking thing. Actually, no, I'm not going to use the word pretty because one, that genderizes it and we can't do that these days. But also, it's not a girl. It's too butch and manly for that. It's a beast. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> First thing to notice about the van is that it doesn't feel like a van. It might have transit written on it, but it certainly doesn't feel like I'm driving a typical van. It feels very car-like, and that suits me down to the ground, to be honest. I mean, vans are okay, they serve a purpose, but they're just clattery and ugly and smelly old diesel-y things. I mean, this is a diesel. And apart from the fact that you can hear the exhaust because of the electronic Thor exhaust system, you just wouldn't know. And that works really well for me. That doesn't. Get rid of the sun. So, I've got no complaints. I like the way it feels. I like the way it drives. We're pulling up to the traffic lights, so now we should bring to the outside lane because it's a bit rough. The road surfaces, I don't know what I like in your area, but the road surfaces are just getting worse and worse and worse around the country. Awful. Just 
potholes forming everywhere and just awful. So I'm going to demonstrate now what it's like to pull away. Now, one thing I don't like about this is the turbo lag it has. If you pull away normally, it goes, and then it goes. So I had to give it a little bit of revs to be able to pull away decently. The problem with that is that you're then likely to get wheel spin if you're not careful. So it's a very fine line between wheel spinning and turbo lag. So let's see which one we end up with. Obviously it's not a race and I'm not thrashing it. Just want to demonstrate how good this is at pulling away. See, 40, pretty good, no complaints. So even with uh, the fact that I've got 45 profile tyres on here, the ride is still comfortable. It's more solid than you would expect from, um, like for example, my Peugeot boxer van that I have for work. Um, the ride is a bit more, less forgiving, shall we say, but um, it's not uncomfortable at all. Um, the steering wheel is nice to hold, it's nice and comfortable, a nice soft steering wheel. It's quiet in here as I say. Um, it's comfortable seats. Uh, I mean I went to Liverpool recently in this. Didn't get a backache at all once, my legs didn't hurt. Um, and that's a good five and a half hour journey for me each way. So no dramas there at all. Um, I like that you get, uh, as I say, um, the electric windows, the heated seats, which I've never used. I put them on once just to make sure that I've got heated seats that work. Other than that, I haven't bothered because I'm really not that bothered about heated seats. Oh, I love that V8 burble. it's not a V8 but I get asked all the time in fact the most common question I get given or statement I get given should I say is I bet that's thirsty I don't know that since I had my Mustang but um, you know I mean the best thing about it is that this V8 does 45 miles to the gallon on a run around town it's about 32 33 um, and I'm not an undertaker driver but um, that's okay with me, you know. Um, 45 is, is decent. Um, it's got the Ad Blue, and the Ad Blue does mean uh, you have to keep topping it up. And I say keep topping it up. Um, I get a warning when there's 1,500 miles worth left. Now, I get if you're on the road all day, every day, that can go down quite quickly. But for me, doesn't go down very quickly at all. So the AdBlue lasts a long time. What I have noticed is that AdBlue prices have doubled. It's still not expensive, but for a 10 litre, um, the first time I bought it, it was 16 pound. The last time I bought it, very recently, it was 33 pound. So it has gone up quite a lot. Um, that's available from practically every petrol station. However, it's not a massive drama to be honest. What you don't want to do is run out of Ad Blue, because if you do, that's the pound rolling around in there. If you do, then there's severe consequences. Um, it can really gunk up your engine and foul everything up. Um, the response acceleration is oh fantastic. You can really feel the difference uh, between this and a standard van. It really is punchy, and it's really got some good poke. Um, 
it's very easy to drive very simple the clutch is very light the brakes are superb the seating position is comfortable um, I don't have any complaints at all the steering and the response is great um, the suspension is spot on um, as I say it's quite forgiving it's not horrendous uh, but it is not as soft as your traditional van but with that you don't get any wallow it holds corners quite nicely and we'll go back in a second so I'll go around this roundabout and you'll see what I mean but um, yeah it's as I say it's quiet in here oh what I do like is the heated screen you put that on and within I'd say 10 seconds you can see the ice melting down the screen it's so quick it's really really good what I don't like is what I said before is in that quarter window there's nothing there's you know it takes ages to demist you've got to get out and wipe it down and you've got heated mirrors so that's pretty pointless if this quarter window that you look through to look in the mirrors is all either misted up or rained on or icy other than that I don't really have anything negative to say about it one little bit apart from the space in the back now as I say it is a bit damp so I'm not gonna go around here too quick but you know I'm going around here at uh, 30 miles an hour tiny bit of body roll but it sticks to it quite nicely it's comfortable it's smooth it's great Now, when I used to have my Ford Ranger, um, I loved that. That was a lot more forgiving, uh, obviously, because it's got big balloon tyres on it. And that was such fun, and it looked awesome. But this is just so much more practical. I like the three-seat arrangement. I usually have a child seat on here for my little boy. Um, everything is easy and modern. You know, you've got your DAB, touchscreen, radio, uh, the air conditioning, if you want it. Um, yeah <laughs> great visibility out of the mirrors obviously cup holders everywhere six speed gearbox i recommend a van now obviously you can get these in different guises um the double cab ones you can get with um a little bit of load space in the back um you can get the bigger ones the high top ones I would like a high top one for practicality but it certainly wouldn't look anywhere near as good as this one does in my opinion obviously so let me know if you've got a van let me know what you've got if you've got one of these let me know what you think of it because I'm I'm so pleased with it I love this van I don't think I'd love it if it didn't look this good and it didn't sound like this because it's a van and let's be honest, the reason why we have vans is for them to be practical, not to pose about in. But I am a bit of a tart, and I'm well aware of that. And I love it. Which is why everything I own, I do something too. Now, for those of you that um, are going to write in the comments, and I'm sure there'll be one or two, um, at least, there's just a van, why are you bothering? Why waste time? Why waste money? Why you just it's just a van if you want to use it for work just use a Renault traffic because it's much cheaper blah 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 no that's not me and if you've been watching this channel for a while you'll know it's not me I like doing things to it I like individuality I love that it looks cool I love that it sounds like it does so there you know um, I have driven many vans, uh, Renault Traffic, similar to this one, similar age, nowhere near as much space inside I found, a um, little less space in the back as well, and it's lower, um, and I think the same applies for the Vauxhall Vivaro, because obviously you've got the low bit and then it sort of bulges up in that ugly way over the door, looks weird, it looks like someone sat on the roof, a giant person sat on the roof. Um, other than that, um, you're then into your bigger, just more practical, everyday, mundane vans that you use for moving stuff. Um, the only thing I move in this is uh, the odd bike every now and then. 
but if I need to move a bike, I can, whereas in the Ranger, I just couldn't do it at all. If it wasn't for the exhaust, this would be unbelievably quiet. For a diesel, very quiet. to it sounds awesome so we yeah out of the way too slow another thing about having 185 horsepower is <laughs> if you want to overtake something within the legal limits that you're allowed to of course then you can now being a van it is limited to 60 miles an hour on dual carriageways motorways is the same as a car uh, because of its lower weight capacity um, so you can do 70. Um, I've sat uh, on a motorway very recently as I say I was coming back um, from Liverpool um, the nearest motorway to us where we are is 100 miles away um, so I've sat on um, the motorway at a steady 68 miles an hour on the cruise control and I was doing 46 miles to the gallon pretty impressive so there you go, that's my 2018 Ford Transit Custom RSV Sport. Let's finish off, shall we? Now, of course, being 2023, they are going to be bringing out the e-Transit very soon. Um, now, my previous video moaning about um, electric vehicles um, sort of applies doubly for commercial vehicles because the e-transit has a range the base one has a range of 171 miles that's it now if you're delivering stuff in a transit 171 miles is not a lot i mean if you're the local gardener and you've only got to go 20 miles to a job or you know a build or something like that then it might work better for you but it's £48,000, including VAT, and that's a lot of money. Now, there is a 2.5 um, hybrid version, which might be a better option, because you've still got the fuel combustion engine, um, and then some electricness also, but there's only about 30 miles worth of electricness in it. So it's sort of okay, and it's still more expensive than the petrol, or sorry, diesel equivalent. Um, diesel is very green these days, um, not like it used to be with the black, chuggy, smoky stuff, um, especially with this Ad Blue system. So, you know, it's, I think diesel is the better option, personally. Um, you can get a, a, a longer capacity transit, but obviously that's more money, and it's only about 230 miles. So it does depend what you're going to be using it for. It just seems, I don't know. Again, the infrastructure is not there and the range isn't there yet. They're trying to run before they can walk and they need to sort out the base of what you know they need, the infrastructure and the range, um, and then the price before they start flooding the market with everything like this. And electric is the way everyone is going now. So they need to get on them quickly and get it done. Anyway, that's all I've got to say for this episode. So thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back next time with something else, um, probably a bike. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, if you have anything else to say, then please put that also. Please like, share and comment on this video. And until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Bye bye.